the ocean, over the clouds, and around the world, here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends, Stinky and Jake! Now it's the Animal Show! Hello, all you little animals out there. I am Stinky. And I am Jake. And today we're going to meet two of the most colorful animals in the world. world. A wasp and a blue-footed booby. Uh, hey, Jake, since we're going to be hanging around all these colorful animals, we better do something about you. What do you mean? Well, Jake, at least I'm black and white. But you, you're just plain old white fur from your head all the way down to your toe claws. So? Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll meet a wasp and a booby right after this. And now it's time for... That's amazing! Hmm, <laughs> today, a butterfly with gigantic eyes. Hips, a peacock butterfly. Mm. With its colorful markings, it looks just like it has big eyes. Phew, boy, no way I'd get near that guy. That's right. Predators stay away because these markings scared them off. No kidding. <laughs> the peacock butterfly. Hmm. Another animal that'll make even predators say, Whoo! That's amazing! Here you go, Jake. Oh, well, uh, what is this? Oh, well, that's a shirt to make you more colorful. Go on, put it on. Uh, well, maybe I will, uh, right after we meet our first guest. And here she is, all the way from Western Europe. Europe. Winnie the Wasp. just as my cousin Tizzy described it. Oh, uh, welcome to the show, Winnie. Uh, <gasps> thanks, Bunny. Yeah. No problem, Jakey Wakey. <laughs> welcome, Winnie. Oh, you must be stinky and Jake. No, it's a pleasure to meet you, Winnie. It's my goal to bring a bit of brightness into your life. Oh, yeah, well, Jake here is kind of drab. Oh. But, but when do you see him in his new shirt? Not now, Stinky. Uh. Now, tell us, Winnie, about the life of a colorful wasp. Mm. Most certainly. You see, there are many, many types oh. of wasp. Mm. But we're all part of a tradition that began almost 60 million years ago. And through the years, we've developed a very organized society. Oh, wow. You see, wasps live in groups called colonies and build large nests out of a paper that we make ourselves by chewing up wood and mixing it with our saliva. What are these wasps doing? Oh, these ones have found some delicious fruit. Wasps just love fruit. Berries, apples, anything sweet. You may not know this, but wasps smell using our antenna. Oh, that's nothing. Skunks stink using our tails. <laughs> Some people consider wasps a pest, but they forget that we also eat grubs and caterpillars and other insects that damage their gardens. Well, those wasps have been chewing on that apple for a long, long time. Wasps have very powerful jaws. We use them like chimpanzees use hands to cut up food to dig with and to help build our nest. Now, what do wasps do in their nests? Oh, that's easy, Jake. They watch TV, order a pizza. Oh, no, Stinky. A wasp's nest is there to protect the queen wasp and the eggs she lays. That too. In fact, it's the queen who first starts to build the nest. Like this queen potter wasp here. When spring comes, she builds a small nest out of clay where she lays her eggs. Mm -hmm. And then what does the queen do? She leaves food in the nest, seals it up and flies away. But the queens of other kinds of wasps stay in their nest. Mm. When the eggs become wasps, they look after the queen so she can lay more eggs. Without the queen, no colony of wasps could survive. And every year, several of her eggs will become queens and start their own nests. Now, do you come back to the same nest every year? No, we don't. Bees like my cousin Tizzy use the same hive year after year. But once a wasp nest has been used for a season, we never return to it. Ah, now tell us about your stinger. Ew, don't. Those things hurt. Bees and wasps both have stingers that contain a kind of poison that can paralyze small animals. But once a bee uses that stinger, the bee dies. We wasps can use our stingers again and again. That's a great way to defend ourselves. Of course, we do have another way to protect ourselves. Our colors. Your colors? How do they protect you? A wasp's yellow and black colors are a warning. When a bird, a lizard, or any small animal that eats insects sees wasps like these, they usually know better than to attack. Because of your yellow and black color? Right. In nature, yellow and black are common warning colors. Most animals associate these colors with a bad taste or a nasty run-in with a wasp. Hmm. 
Now, why are these wasps going into that tree? Did they lose their nest? Oh, no, no, no. Those are tropical wasps. They build their nest in the crevices of trees or in clumps of leaves. There are also digger wasps that build their nests underground and potter wasps that make their nests out of mud. Only the common wasps, like little old me, build the kind of nests you see hanging from trees. Well, thanks for telling us all about wasps, Winnie. Yeah, Winnie, you're gonna love Jake's shirt. Go on, Jake, put, put it on. Oh, oh, not now, Stinky. <laughs> oh, well, I'd love to stay, but I've got to get back to my nest. Oh. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Come on, oh. put this on, Jake. you will look great on you, and just well... think, you'll never be bothered by small animals that eat insects. Oh, all right, I'll put it on. Yeah. Right after Baby, Baby Talk. Talk. Nice day today, isn't it? Mm, I sure, but not very exciting. Yeah, not like the day the snake came to town. Ooh, remember that? Mm. And everywhere it went, it kept running into booby babies. <laughs> well, what do you expect in a booby colony? <laughs> I remember my baby booby brother, Bubby was really scared of it. I, I remember you and I didn't even pay attention. Yeah, except you got the giggles, remember? <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> Snakes are so funny looking. Yeah, that was some day. Now, that was exciting. Yeah. Hey, whatever happened to that snake? Do you know? I guess it just snaked on down the road. <laughs> nice day, isn't it? Mm. I feel ridiculous. Oh, this is gonna be a whole new you. But I like the old me. But doesn't this new look just make you want to sing? Well, now that you mention it. <laughs> it's hard to be as colorful as me. I'm nice and sweet and cute as I can be. Each morning when I wake, the fan is under shake. To highlight all the beauty that I long for constantly. And with my friends, we always like to share. Go. <clears throat> and there, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, now I really look silly. <laughs> Hi, Stinky. Hi. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. Sorry, Jay. Now, do you have a quiz for us? Sure. It's all about wasps, like my cousin Winnie. Here it comes. <laughs> Which of these is a wasp? Look carefully. What do you think? I'll be back in a buzz. You know, I think Tizzy laughed because she liked your new look. And I think she laughed because I look so silly. I like your look, Jake. See? But you sure look silly. See? Ready to find out which one was the wasp? Oh, sure. sure. And the answer is they all are. There are thousands of species of wasp, and here are four of them. The tree wasp, the putter wasp, the rissor wasp, and the common wasp. That's the buzz. This is a rissa wasp. She's looking for a place to lay her eggs. That long, thin, needle-like thing is called her ovipositor. Ovipositor. The ovipositor is what the wasp uses to lay her eggs. It's normally kept in a sheath for safety. Here you can see the wasp using her ovipositor to drill into the wood. She wants to lay her eggs deep under the wood and bark. It's hard work being a wasp. Now you can see the eggs appearing. The Risa wasp will lay four to ten eggs in one place. The eggs will stick to a grub living in the wood. When the eggs hatch, the Risa wasp larva will then feed on the grub. 
Having laid her eggs, the Rissa wasp removes her ovipositor and replaces it carefully into its sheath. Then she moves on to another tree. Risa wasps are found in pine forests all over the world. Have you ever seen one? Be seeing you! So what do you think of the hat, Jake? I look ridiculous. But colorful. I'm colorful, but ridiculous. Just like Yves Saint Laurent. Bonjour, bonjour, my petit animal. It is I, Yves Saint Laurent. And today, I will answer the question I am asked time and time again. If they ask, what is the best part of being a great chef? My answer is simple. It is very safe to be a chef. But why? Because no matter how colorful the food, it is not dangerous. Magnifique. No. Yeah. <laughs> Look, a delicious sandwich. Very colorful, very safe. I think I will take a bath. Get off me, your stupid sandwich. Oh, well, until next time, remember, it is better to be safe and sorry than to be chest. Buy a sandwich. I'm out of here. It's a mm -mm. wig, Jake. Mm -mm. Go ahead, try uh, uh. it. I draw the line at wearing a wig. <sighs> All right, fine. I suppose you're right. It'd probably clash with your shirt. Well, go on, go home, wig. Oh, and I came on the way on the subway. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and now it's time to meet another very colorful animal. All the way from the islands off the coast of North and South America. America. Here's Milton the booby. Seven to Murgatroyd. Woo! Here we are, hitting the big time. <laughs> I've always wanted to meet a skunk and a colorful yet ridiculous polar bear. <laughs> hey, Milton, I thought you were supposed to be a real colorful animal, too. Oh, I am, but not up here on top. Take a look at my feet. <laughs> I'm a blue-footed booby. Oh, and there's plenty more where I come from. Hmm. Yep, see there? A beach full of blue-footed boobies. Whoa, how come your feet are blue? Are they cold? Oh, not at all, Stinky. Blue is just their natural color. Lovely, aren't they? Oh, now do your feet serve any special purpose? Yes, we use them to stand on. Uh, They're very good for that. No, 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 no. I meant, is the blue color useful? You know, in the same way that the yellow and black on the wasp horns other animals. Uh, we male boobies do use our blue feet to impress the female blue-footed booby. Uh, uh, tell us, Milton, why are you birds called boobies? From what I'm told, booby comes from the Spanish word bobo, which means stupid fellow. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? I think you look very distinguished. So do I, Stinky. So tell me, Milton, can blue-footed boobies fly very well? <laughs> can we fly? Mm -hmm. Take a look. I bet you've never seen a finer flock of fearless feathered flyers. Oh, that's easy for you to say. Well, actually, it wasn't. <laughs> oh. oh, no, Milton, do something. They're crashing into the ocean. Mm -hmm. Tell them they can't land on the water. Ooh, and they call me a booby. Hey, relax, Stinky. Those boobies are just looking for food. We fly just above the water until we spot some fish. Then we dive down into the ocean, grab the fish in our bills, and fly back out again. Female blue-footed boobies are larger than the male, so they fly farther out to sea and catch bigger fish. Male boobies stay close to shore and catch smaller ones. Between all of us, we don't miss a chance to catch almost any kind of fish. Well, how do you think Jake would look with blue feet? Hmm, with that outfit? Perfect. Be right back. But ooh, sti sti stinky. Oh. <laughs> ooh, I can't wait to see this. I can, but in the meantime, why don't you tell us more about where you live? Well, certainly. You know, you should come visit sometime. It's lovely. Did you know that there are almost 10 million of us? I didn't know that. Oh, it's true. Of course, not all of us are in this picture oh, here. Of course not. No. And did you know that there are several different kinds of boobies? I didn't know that either. And believe it or not, some boobies don't have blue feet. You don't say. I just did. You see these boobies? They're called mask boobies. Because of that mask-like coloring on their face, right? Bingo! But just like the blue-footed booby, mass boobies eat fish, live on islands, and breed on the beaches. The beach? Is that where you built your nest? Right, yeah. Uh, we dig a little hole down near the shore and lay our eggs there. It's a great place to raise a family. I'm back. Look, Jake, 
Blue shoes, here you go. Wow. Now you can have blue feet just oh. like Milton here. Ooh, ooh, try it, Jake. You'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'll do it. But why don't you sing a song while I do? Oh, okay. You know, there's nothing this booby would rather do be. <laughs> and now here's Milton with Do the Booby. <laughs> Have you heard the news? I got the booby blues. Stepping out of my new blue shoes and do the booby. Oh, do the booby. Do the groovy dooby booby with Ruby. Let's do the booby. I expect you heard I'm a clumsy bird. Everybody says I'm some kind of nerd. Let's do the booby. Do the booby. Do the boogie woogie booby with Ruby. Oh, every booby girl you meet Can't forget those big blue feet When a booby wants to bear He shakes his feet right in the air <laughs> Everyone says that one of these days The booby dance is gonna be the craze Let's do the booby Whoa, do the booby <laughs> oh, Do the groovy dooby booby with Ruby Let's do the booby in case you're wondering who Ruby is, she's my cousin's sister's nephew's wife. Great song, Milton. Hey, what do you think of Jake's shoes? A blue-footed polar bear? What do they think of next? <laughs> All right, Stinky, can I take this stuff off now? It just isn't me. Oh, I'll keep it on a little bit longer, Jake. Maybe you'll learn to like it. <sighs> Oh, all right. Meanwhile, here's today's edition of Animal Awards. Today on Animal Awards... We're looking for the most colorful animal. Mm -hmm. Is it the peacock? Mm -hmm. The peacock butterfly. Or the parrot? Mm. And guess what? What? All those animals are so colorful that the judges couldn't pick a winner. Mm. So... They decided to give today's animal award for the most colorful animal to yeah. my cousin, Jakey. All right, Jake. I won, I won, I won an animal award, yippee. Congratulations to cousin Jakey, Yay! Yeah, I dig those duds, fella. Whoa! Thanks to you, Stinky, I won an animal award. Oh, uh, Jake, it was my pleasure. Oh, well, how could we celebrate? Well. How about telling a story? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Happy. Good Sit idea. Down. Sit down, everybody. And okay. today's story is about a Dinopus spider called Dooney. <gasps> Once upon a time, there was a Dinopus spider called Dooney. One day, Dooney woke up and said, It's my birthday. I must give myself a present. But because she couldn't think of what she wanted to give herself, she decided to make the wrapping paper first. So she spun herself some very pretty wrapping paper. Ah, yes, that's nice, she said. But what should I put in it? It could be something small, or it could be something big, or really big, or really, really big. But Dooney just couldn't think what she wanted for her birthday. She thought, Thought and thought. And then, all of a sudden, a beetle came by. That's it, she cried, and she caught the beetle up in her pretty wrapping paper. She wrapped it all up. I can't wait to open it up later, she said. But first, I think I'll play my favorite birthday game. It's called Look Like a Tree. So Dooney played Look Like a Tree, then opened her present, and had the best birthday ever. The end. Thanks, oh. Cousin Jake. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, that was nice. You know, Stinky, mm -hmm. I'm so happy about being chosen most colorful animal mm -hmm. that I'm going to wear these clothes forever. Oh, <laughs> well, you might want to wash them sometime. Oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> mm, I'm strong. You're looking good. Yeah, watch out, female chicken hooks. Watch out, female sparrows. Watch out! What's Here it? I come! Oh! oh. 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 Hey, Armstrong, oh. did you see huh? how really, really good I am at running? Yeah, but I didn't see how really, really good you are at stopping. Hey, nice jacket! Oh, uh, well, it makes me look uh, really colorful, don't you think? Uh, are you ready to go see a bunch of birds? Birds? Sure, well, which way? Behind the door to anywhere. Well, let's go, let's go. 
<laughs> what? Hey, I, I don't see any beds out here. Oh, come on, Armstrong. Just, just looks like water to me. Huh? Where are we? This is Bosun Bird Island off Ascension Island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, kind of small for an island, isn't it? Well, it's actually a sea stack. Sea stacks are small islands with very steep cliff-like sides, which makes them a good place for seabirds to nest. Seabirds? Yeah, I see some birds. Let me at them. Woohoo! Hey, 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 easy does what? it, Armstrongy Wongy. If you fell down there, you'd be Armstrongy Gunny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, worse, I'd get my new jacket wet. Hey, look, see those birds with the white caps? They're naughty. Hey, how'd you know that? As a chicken hawk, I am the member of the bird family, and that makes me a bird expert. I take it those naughties have their nest up here on the cliffs? That's right. And there's a naughty chick. Ah. Hmm. Oh, and his gorgeous mother. Hi there. I think that brown booby likes your jacket. Ah, oh, well, then he's not such a booby, is he? Sea stacks are white because of the several feet of bird droppings that cover the island. Yeah, well, if you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh, look, fairy terns. Now that is one beautiful bird. Fairy terns nest on the top of the cliffs, right? You got it. And I think she's asking me to stay for dinner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, I sweetheart. hate to interrupt, but, but what's this bird over here called? Oh, that, that's a frigate bird. Looks like one of those flying prehistoric animals, the pterodactyl. Well, maybe, but if you want to talk color, this guy's got it made. Look at that red throat pouch. Female frigates love it. Ooh. Oh, look! That's a long-tailed tropic bird. Yeah, now that is one classy bird. Do, do long-tailed tropic birds nest on the tops of sea stacks? Yes, they do, which is where I think I'll stay for a little while. No, can't do, Armstrong. It's time to go back. Yeah, but, Bunny, we just got here. I haven't had a chance to show everybody my jacket. Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh, you rushed me. I hate being rushed. All those birds, they didn't see how good I look. <sighs> for habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And Armstrong and Chicken Hawk. Just back from a sea stack in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, which is where I'm going when I retire. Oh, Armstrong. Congratulations, Jake. Thank you, Tizzy. Are you going to keep your new look? Well, it does make me look more colorful, doesn't it? Uh, speaking of color, are you two ready for a colorful quiz? Sure, sure. it is. Here it comes. How does this animal lizard use color to communicate? Any idea? Well, give it a think, and I'll be back in a buzz. Well, Stinky, do you know how that lizard uses color to communicate? He makes a fashion statement? I don't think so. Let's ask Tizzy. Okay. The male anno lizard, also called the American chameleon, has a bright pink throat fan that it uses to scare off rival males and to attract females. That's how it uses color to communicate. Believe it! Thanks, Tizzy, for the great quiz. And thanks to Eve, Armstrong, and Bunny. And a special thanks to our very colorful guest, Winnie the Wasp, and Milton, the blue-footed booby. Goodbye, Stinky. Goodbye, Jake. And an extra special thanks to my friend, Stinky, for making me wear this <laughs> stuff. You know, I like being a polar bear and having white fur, but sometimes it's just fun to get a little silly. Oh, I can be sillier than you. Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs> well,